Hi, uh, it's Mr. Baker here with another physics video. Today we're going to be looking at reflection. So we're going to be looking at reflection today. So let's have a look at constructing mirror images. So here you can see we've got an image formed of a dog in a mirror. Mirror images from a plane mirror are virtual images. This means that if you put a screen behind a mirror of reflecting your image, you would not get an image of your face projected onto the screen. The image isn't real. The light from the source, say the sun or the light bulb in the room, reflects off the object, in this case the dog, reflects towards the mirror and then towards your eye. When you're drawing these ray diagrams, it's really important to draw straight lines with a ruler and also to include the arrows. The arrows always go away from the object and towards your eye. So this is the difference. In a real image, you can put a screen in front of the rays of light and produce an image. There aren't actually any rays behind a mirror it just looks like there are, and so that image is a virtual image. So when we're constructing mirror images, we probably already know these rules, but the images are always the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front, and the same size as the object, and what we call laterally inverted. The left becomes the right, and the right becomes the left. So now we come on to the law of reflection. This law of reflection states that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So this angle is measured from the normal line, the line perpendicular to the mirror or the surface. So here, this is our ray of incidence, so it's I, and this is our ray of reflection, R. So in between the ray of incidence and the normal is the angle of incidence, and in between the ray of reflection and the normal is the angle of reflection. And this angle here, the angle of incidence, is equal to the angle of reflection. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. These are the things you should be able to do. You should be able to draw correct ray diagrams for reflection. You should be able to state the law of reflection and describe the rules of reflection. And you should also be able to explain what a virtual image is. Okay, so at the beginning we asked this question, how big does a mirror have to be so you can see the reflection of your whole height? So let's have a look. So that's you. And you might say, oh, let's have a look into a mirror. Now I know I'm not gonna be able to see my whole height from this mirror. I can see down to my waist here, but I'll just move that mirror back. And if I move the mirror further and further back, then obviously I'm gonna be able to see more, right? Well, no, because the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. And so it doesn't matter how far back you move that mirror, the size of the image formed is going to be dependent on where those rays of light seem to come from. And here they seem to come from your waist still because the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Okay, well, obviously then if I had a mirror that's as big as my whole height, I can see myself, yes, you're right. But look, I don't have to look all the way down to the bottom of the mirror to be able to see my foot. All I've got to do is look halfway down the mirror. So if I have a mirror that is half the height of myself, then I will be able to see an image that goes all the way down to my feet. Okay, so that has been our lesson on reflection. I've been Mr. Baker, and I'll see you next time.